seven people were injured in Zaporizhia as a result of a Russian strike on Monday. More than 30 residential buildings were damaged, according to the regional governor Ivan Fedorov. Another Russian strike on Kiev also damaged a residential building, according to the state emergency service. 43 people were evacuated. Russia fired a barrage of three missiles and 116 Shahid drones, along with some UAVs of an unknown type, at Ukraine during the night from Sunday to Monday, the Air Force reported. 59 drones were destroyed. NATO has released a plan to create a military satellite communications network for the Arctic. Western countries have begun to prepare for a confrontation in the northern regions with Russia and even China. As part of a meeting of NATO defense ministers in Brussels, 13 members of the alliance agreed to implement the North Link initiative to create space communication systems in the Arctic using existing commercial satellites, Politico reports. The plan envisages using the services of satellite constellations to create a reliable international communications network for the Arctic, NATO said. The alliance does not control its own satellites, but in 2018 it called space the fifth theater of military operations and the following year a special space command center was opened at the American Ramstein Air Base in Germany. The Russian armed forces have stepped up their activities in the Arctic region. In response, the US has begun preparing for a possible military conflict with it and China, which includes the Arctic in what it calls the new strategic frontier, along with cyberspace, the high seas and outer space. In July, the Pentagon warned in an updated Arctic strategy that Russia was engaging in destabilizing actions in the high north against the US Canada and their allies, including attempts to jam global positioning systems, signals and military aircraft flights that are conducted in an unprofessional manner and in violation of international law and customs. The Pentagon also pointed to increased naval cooperation in the region between Moscow and Beijing. NATO members Denmark, Iceland, Canada, Norway and the US have Arctic territories, as do recent NATO members Sweden and Finland. These countries, plus France, Germany, Hungary, Italy, Luxembourg and the Netherlands have signed an agreement to develop Northlink. Russia, which also borders the Arctic, has ramped up its operation in the region of late with warnings of jamming attacks on satellites in the area. Russia is fully ready for a conflict with NATO in the Arctic, the country's foreign minister Sergei Lavrov warned recently. We see NATO stepping up drills related to possible crisis in the Arctic, Sergei Lavrov said. Our country is fully ready to defend its interests militarily, politically and from the standpoint of defense technologies, he added. The Arctic is the northernmost point on Earth and includes territory belonging to eight nations. Norway, Sweden, Finland, Denmark, Canada, the United States, Iceland and Russia. All except Russia are NATO members. The U.S. is aware when and how Israel will respond to Iran's missile strike, U.S. President Joe Biden told reporters ahead of his departure to Germany. 
as to whether the U.S. is aware of what response Israel will provide and when it will take respective measures, Biden said yes and yes. Biden declined to share any details regarding Israel's planned response to the October 1st missile attack, though his remarks appeared to mark the first time the U.S. indicated it has reached an understanding with Israel on the nature of the retaliation. Asked by reporters about the prospects of Middle East peace, Biden said he sees an opportunity that we can probably deal with Israel and Iran in a way that ends the conflict for a while, stops the back and forth. We think that there's a possibility of working for a ceasefire in Lebanon. It's going to be harder in Gaza, but we agree that there has to be an outcome. What happens in the days after? The president added without elaborating why he thought this way. On October the 1st, the Islamic Republic launched a massive missile attack against the Jewish state in response to the killing of senior officials from the Palestinian movement Hamas, the Lebanon-based Shia movement Hezbollah and the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. Tehran said that 90% of the missiles hit their designated targets. Israel, in turn, said that Iran had fired some 180 missiles into the country, most of which were intercepted. The Israeli general staff vowed to choose the right moment to surprise Iran with a counterattack. Israel has decided on the targets it could potentially strike in Iran, according to Israeli television reports. According to Channel 12 News, the military presented a list of targets to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Defense Minister Yoav Gallant as it finalizes preparations, which include sensitive coordination with other countries in the region. A report by the Khan public broadcaster said the political echelon had decided on the targets without specifying which officials or decision-making forum. The targets are clear. Now it's a matter of time, an Israeli source told the broadcaster.